I hope you are all having a great day. I am Mr. Rish. Thank you for joining me. We have recently been talking about this surface area of solids or area of the surface of revolutionary solids or rotational solids. An interesting or perhaps a very interesting application is this. You can now all of a sudden with this knowledge we have demonstrate the surface area of a cone but a right circular cone. You take a little cone in the three-dimensional aspect. This right here would be dotted lines to give it that three-dimensional nature. You can extend a right triangle over here. Now you have a right circular cone. There's a specific surface area formula which is considered rather complex. It's basically made of two components. You're looking at this and then you're looking at that. This right here on the top is the surface area of your cone part, the lateral surface of that cone. Then of course you have underneath it the area of that circle, you're adding both of those. Let's just say the lateral surface of the cone and then you have the circular base, they have to add to give you the total surface area of a right circular cone and we're looking at all of that. The only assumption we're making here, which is a given, is that what we'll add in at the end is the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. There's no, no need to go into the derivation of that. We're just going to go here into the lateral surface of the cone and we add this at the end to complete the formula. So let's look at this surface area and I promise you it's a very interesting concept. The actual surface area derivation begins with this. You have an xy plane from which you can identify two points. You have a point, a y intercept and an x intercept. You can connect those. You have a 0 comma h and you have a r comma 0. The reason why I've placed everything here in this format is because if I were to draw a circular cross section you see in this way the radius is located in the horizontal dimension and you have a certain height which is in the vertical dimension and that right there is a good way of doing it. You could do a laterally placed cone and adjust everything in that regards you'd have a 0 comma r and an h comma 0 but this is just fine. You have to take the equation of this line. You have two points and you determine the slope of these two points and you end up having a minus h or r. Now you have to determine an equation of this because we're going to do a rotation here around the y-axis. Your equation here is y is equal to minus h over rx plus your y-intercept which is h. A good equation form here for the surface area is going to be you have a 2 pi pushed out lower limit 0 upper limit h 0 to h. It makes sense to look at it in that way. You have a certain x equation which will come about and then you have this. You have a dx over dy square with respect to dy. But you see that equation, your y equals mx plus b, you have to convert it into the form x equals. You'll solve for x, you'll have a y minus h and you take the minus h over r on the other side and it flips. That becomes your x equation which will fall right into here. But you also have to determine your this, your derivative with respect to this. You're doing the derivative of this d over dx but you're also getting the derivative of that at the same time. If you were to open this up, you have a minus r y over h plus r, and now you do the derivative of this. This is leading you to your dx over dy. And let's write it in the proper way, dx over dy. With regards to y, your derivative here is minus r over h. With regards to this, of a constant, it's a zero. Minus r over h is equal to dx over dy. Here we'll put minus r over h. And we now know what your equation is in terms of x. But this equation here in terms of x, I can write it in a better, better way by opening up the parentheses. It's minus r y over h plus r. So these are the two pieces of information I need now to plug in there. And let's do that. My entire scheme over here, the template for surface area becomes 2 pi. We're looking from 0 to h. We have a certain x equation, which is right here. Minus r y over h plus r. We have to put everything right over here, 1 plus dx over dy whole square, which is minus r over h whole square dy. Continue from here, 2 pi, 0 to h, we have a minus r y over h plus r. And now let's work on this. If you work on this, you're basically looking at 1 plus r square over h square in a root, which is h square plus r square over h square within a root, because you're doing a common denominator which if you simplify everything is an r square plus h square over h because you could have written each of these under their own radicals which would be just as fine and that's exactly what you have h square plus r square r square plus h square it's all the same so from here now we're seeing this r square plus h square all over h dy and now things are beginning to take form 
Now, when you look at this, you're basically seeing this item out here and you're seeing all of this right here. All of this can be treated as a constant and you can push it out. You will have a two pi. You'll have here a radical with R squared plus H squared all over H. And then you can do this, your integral sign and this. This becomes your actual integrand, which will actually be affected with regards to dy, all of this. And you can integrate this. And let's do it. We come right over here. We have a 2 pi over h, and then we have this, r squared plus h squared. And now let's do the antiderivative of this. Everything here with respect to y, we'll have a minus r y squared over 2h plus r y upper limit h and a lower limit 0. From this point onwards we'll have a 2 pi over h you have this r squared plus h squared. Let's put the h and the 0. 0 is meaningless but you'll have a minus r h squared over 2 h plus r h. Let's simplify this part right here. You'll basically have a minus r h over 2 plus r h. You have a full r h and less a half r h you'll get an r h over 2. From all of that, we get an RH over 2, so you might as well substitute this here for an RH over 2 because that's what it's equal to, times RH over 2. Now when you look at this, things cancel out. You have an H cancelling out with that, you have a 2 cancelling out with that. When you consolidate everything, you have a pi R and then you have a R square plus H square. But this right here alone is just the lateral surface area of your cone as you're seeing, the lateral surface area only, the, the extent. We haven't added in the circle. We must add in the circle. When we add in the circle area, we have a pi r square. When we see some common terms, we have a pi r, pi r, and we isolate them. I am isolating a pi r. Then from here, I have a root of r square plus h square. And then from here, I have an r. That right there leads me to my actual surface area of a right circular cone. It's a pi r parentheses root of r square plus h square plus r close your parentheses and there it is that's the formula we want for clarity we can put it here again we have a pi r then we have a radical r square plus h square and then plus r and there it is there's a component in here which represents your circular cone lateral aspect and then the component in there which represents your circle area this lower area which is your circle and you know if you were to shade it it would look like this a circular base which would have a certain surface area and that would be pi r square and then of course the lateral portion of the cone would be all of this right here and that has its own area the area of the uh, the cone alone is just this in terms of the lateral area this is a circle combining them to give you the actual surface area for right circular cone and that's all i wanted to show you in this video and this right here should probably bring us to a comfortable level with regards to surface area of revolutionary solids or rotational solids. Thank you. Have a good day.